everybody. It's Jim from Find Your Marathon. Hope you're having a great weekend. Um, just in case you're finding out a little bit about me or you're finding the channel for the first time, former 350-pound fat guy, um, now certified personal trainer based here in New Orleans. And these videos are designed specifically for people who are clinically obese or morbidly obese, right? So one of the reasons why I want to post a workout video of something that you can do at home is that when when you're trying to get into working out, right, and you're trying to change your life, and maybe mentally we've finally gotten to that place where we've hit a little bit of rock bottom, right, and you're wanting to do something. And, and look, I'm gonna be really clear. So I, I lost 180 pounds, right, completely changed my life. Um, and when I started this process, I had zero designs of ever turning into what I was now, right? Um, I, I really just wanted to feel better because I felt horrible. And so I just wanted to do something. I wasn't sure what the something was. Because I, 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 trust me, I was like, okay, I guess I need to eat better. I guess I need to start working out. Um, and you have to start taking some first steps. And the first steps when you're 50 pounds overweight or 100 pounds overweight or 150 pounds overweight or more is, okay, first, obviously, we have to change how we look at food and we have to change uh, our nutrition and diet a little bit, right? And that's gonna get real easy. We're just gonna start eating less of everything, right? A little bit less of everything goes a long way, and that's almost a whole other video. Today, we're gonna cover the, okay, how do I start working out and doing something? Because generally speaking, if, if you've gained a lot of weight and you've struggled with being overweight your whole life, you're not really a fan of working out, right? You probably are too embarrassed, as I was, to walk into a gym. You probably don't want to go into a park and have all the pretty people laugh at you. Um, at least that's what you think is going to happen. It's not, but those are the things that kind of roll around in our head. You don't want people judging you and looking at you. And I don't care what any gym commercial says about being a judgment-free zone. Gyms are the places where people judge people. Right? That is just part of what happens in that gym culture, unfortunately. And I say that as somebody that works in a gym and desperately tries not to let my gym become that environment, right? but it still happens. So part of what we want to do is we want to start working out. right? Starting at home is a really, really great place. And what I want you to think about is really a simple concept. right? It's really easy to do the first workout. First workout, really simple. Almost anybody will do the first workout and be highly motivated. But how do we get to the third workout? How do we get to the fifth workout? How do we get to the 15th workout, right? That, that requires consistency. And if you really want to have any level of transformation, whether it's 10 pounds, 110 pounds, you have to stack up consistency over time. In fact, if we could make like a little graphic to put on this video, which Daphne, you should, right? <laughs> it, consistency over time equals results, right? Now, the amount of time and the amount of consistency that we put in, okay, obviously that's going to vary from person to person. The results are going to vary from person to person. But if you are consistently eating a little bit better, if you are consistently working out and you do it for a long enough time, you are going to get results, right? But you have to be willing to start someplace in the privacy of your own home with a minimal investment is a really safe place to start. So here's what I want you to think about in terms of, okay, great, Jim, you're telling me work out, so I gotta go spend 500 bucks to work out. No, not really, right? First thing I want you to do is I want you to commit to working out three or four times a week for 30 minutes at a time or at least 20 minutes at a time, right? And I don't care how busy you are. Trust me, when I started my journey, I was an executive working 60, 70 hours a week with a child as a single parent a few months a year, right? Everybody's got 90 minutes to two hours to do something in the privacy of their own home to take care of themselves. So two times a week, I want you to just go walk for 20 minutes. That's not hard. Any anybody can go walk. Doesn't matter how how fast you're walking. Doesn't matter if you're just walking around the block and you have to take a break every time you go around. I don't 
take care of it's out to the mailbox you take a break and you go back and forth for 20 minutes and you only go three times over time that will get better so you've got to get some sort of lower intensity cardiovascular work in at least twice a week right the thing that i want you to do the other two times a week is i want to see you doing some form of strength training even a bare minimum strength training two times a week with a very basic workout that literally involves four different exercises just four right because the one thing that we can't do while we're trying to lose body fat is we can't lose lean muscle right we probably don't have a lot to begin with anyway number one but number two if we're losing muscle and body fat and we start creeping way back on at some point we're going to end up in a worse place than we were before and one of the number one predictors for keeping weight off is going to be generating some level of lean muscle right so the strength training component of this is really critical to you being successful right so number one walk two times a week you could do it in your sandals it costs you nothing right any pair of shoes you have you can go walking if you want to go get really fancy fifty hundred dollar shoes be my guest right so two times a week we're going to walk the other thing we're going to do is we're going to strength train. okay so what we're going to do is we're going to show you what you need to do a really basic strength workout at home right first pair of dumbbells right now these are 10 pound dumbbells i got at academy for probably twenty dollars we just looked at walmart.com we looked on amazon you can get 20 to 40 a pound. I know you're very mad. That's a dog, everybody. Um, Josie, who we've seen from other videos, right? But you can get adjustable dumbbells for anywhere from $20 to 40 to $50 that will range anywhere from like five to 20 pounds, right? So we don't need a lot of weight. We just need a really, really small amount of weight, right? The other thing that I would love to see you get if you can, either dumbbells or really basic resistance bands, right? Now, if you travel a lot, and we're using travel as our excuse for not working out, and I did this with a, one of my clients who's a flight attendant, I said, go spend $20 on resistance bands, pack it in your travel bag, and you can do a workout with this, right? So, one or two resistance bands, again, $15, $20, with the handles that you can kind of detach, right? And we'll probably put some links up for you if you're looking for something like that. We're gonna get a door jam, right, for our resistance bands that we wanna use. The other thing, and this is a really hard household item to kind of get, I know, right, but it's gonna help you if we're, if we're trying to learn how to do a couple things. We're gonna use a chair. Now I know, right, everyone has a chair. Now again, I want you to think about who are, we, who are these videos for, right? If we're really, really overweight and we need to work our legs, it's gonna be really hard to do certain movements, right? So we definitely want a chair. Part of what we wanna do is we wanna do good, functional exercises that are going to help us in day-to-day -day life. What I really want you to think about is this is a workout you could do for a few months, a couple times a week, to get in good enough shape to maybe go to a gym or maybe buy, start buying other garbage that you wanna buy right and I want you to think about this one of the things that we always do like you get up you're contemplating your existence it's four in the morning the infomercial comes on and you're tempted to buy whatever thing you see on TV right whatever latest DVD fad workout that you see on TV you're gonna spend a hundred hundred fifty dollars on I'm gonna tell you something it's not that they're bad workouts they're incredibly great workouts the trainers that do them are incredibly good right just to be really honest with you, they're really hard. And you cannot get consistency if you don't feel like you can do the workout. And I don't care how much you try to modify insanity, love insanity, but you, you can't modify insanity if you weigh 300 pounds, right? If you're a 200 pound woman, it's really hard to modify P90X for you, okay? And it's not that it's impossible, but without professional coaching and somebody doing it for you right then, those modifications are not going to work for you. I'm a personal trainer, it's what I do for a living, and I have a lot of experience with it because I had to do it on me, okay? So, we wanna do a workout that's gonna be really, really easy. So instead of investing in the latest piece of junk that you see on TV, what I really would like you to see you do, dumbbells. 
right? Really cheap dumbbells. They could be the vinyl covered crappy ones. You could probably find them on Craigslist or at a garage sale for five or 10 bucks. Or resistance bands, right? Go get an old chair, chair. Maybe a little mat or a carpet. Something soft if the ground is really hard, right? That you can work on. This is what we need to do a total body workout. That's it. And the minimum here, I think this chair, I think we spent like 10 bucks on this chair at a garage sale, right? These were $20 and a pack of resistance bands from five pounds to 75 pounds was the most expensive thing I bought and it was 60. Everything you want to do, you can do with these things, right? So what we're going to do today is we're going to do four moves. Four moves, two sets, that's it, okay? Okay, so the whole workout, super complicated. Four moves, right? Squat, push, pull, core. That's it. We're not doing anything more complicated than that, right? So we're gonna work our legs on some level. We're gonna work our chest and shoulders, right? We're gonna work our back, because everybody wants a sexy back, right? Did you bring in sexy back? Uh-huh. Um, I tell jokes, I'm funny. And we're gonna work on our core, right? Because we wanna get this area strong to make everything better, okay? This is not enough. And it, well, actually, I'll, I'll be honest with you. So when I train people, almost every workout I do is some variation of this. And yeah, I can get more exotic. And when I'm in the gym, sure, I, I can make it a lot cuter with nicer toys. But a lot of it is squat, push, pull, core. Some variation of that, right? So that's what we're doing today. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to do a push-up, right? Now, I know what you're saying. One, you're having flashbacks to PD. Okay, number two, you're probably thinking you can't do a push-up. Well, okay, well, let, look, if we can do our, our real basic push-up, we just want to do a basic push-up, right? And Daphne, why, why don't you get up? I want you to kind of shoot me from the side because what's really important on a full push-up is that we can hold kind of the plank position, right? So you're going to get down on your nice little soft thing. You want to make sure that your shoulders are kind of over your hands, right? We're going to come just like this, down, Nice and slow, up, keep everything strong for one, two, three. You notice I'm not doing this, so if this is your push-up, yeah, no bueno, we need to stop, we need to modify. If this is our push-up, we need to stop, we need to modify, right? You want a nice, solid push-up, okay? So that, that's number one, if, if that's our baseline. If we can do that 10 times, awesome. Let's do two sets, 10 to 15 reps if we can. Now my guess is if you're watching this video, right, and if you were like me at 350 pounds, honestly, I couldn't even do modified push-ups, right? I could not I could not do one push-up. So you'll know this as a girl push-up, right? And I'm gonna be honest with you, I picked this up from a female trainer I was working with one time, and she told me, a really nice lady named Emily said, Jim, we don't do sexist push-ups, we do modified push-ups, right? And that's just really the push-up from our knees, right? So what you're gonna do is we're gonna get into a push-up position and just drop our knees. Just, thank you, okay, I love you. All right, so just like this, we're gonna drop our knees down, cross them in the back, keep everything nice and strong, and then we're just gonna simply go down, right? Lead with your chest. We're also not doing head-ups, right? So we're not doing this number, keep that neck, Everything nice and straight. Again, if we can do 10 with good form, awesome, right? Now we have a modified push-up. If you don't want to go down on your knees, and I know, and I hear this a lot, if, if you're really overweight, the last thing you want to do is kind of get on the floor, right? You kind of, you're like, I'm gonna get down, I can't get up. Which, when you're morbidly obese, that's, I know it sounds crazy, but it's, it's definitely a real thing, right? So we could use any elevated surface to let gravity do some of the work for us. Like, I don't know, something we all have, like a chair, right? So you can get your chair, we can grab the side, and now it's elevated. This is gonna mimic what a modified push-up was, 
Let's say you have a dresser of a really deep condition that's a little bit higher. We could do something like that, right? But again, we could grab this. And we're able to do our push movement. One of the things to really think about anytime you're doing any movement, especially in this workout, I could really say, I'd like you to go down in two seconds and up and one on the eccentric, on the concentric, on the positive or the negative, things that you're just not gonna know what the hell I'm talking about. But, you know, I want you to think this, keep your repetition smooth, right? If you have one thought in your head, keep your repetition smooth. So this is gonna be our push exercise. A push-up. If you can do a push-up, great. If you can't, and you can't hold it all together, then modify it. It's okay, right? You will progress to a full push-up before you know it, right? Oh, it's Louisiana, we live in a swamp, so there's bugs everywhere. But, so, we, we wanna modify if we can. And really, and this is gonna be the hardest thing for guys, I want you to take your ego out of this, okay? Modified push-up, whether it's modified with the chair, modified on our knees, aka girl push-ups, right we, we want to be able to get some sort of chest exercise in if that is even too much for you right i'm going to give you one more modification you can use that will help we're going to move our chair remember our resistance bands right so part of the reasons why we like resistance bands are because they give you some instability while we're working Right, which is going to mimic a little bit of what you're going to do when you're using your body weight. So you're going to get a very light resistance band, right? Let's say maybe two, you have a little bit of a shoulder issue, okay? And we can't put that much load, i.e. weight, on our shoulders for fear of hurting them. So we're going to get the door jam, right? So we're going to have the door jam accessory for our bands, which big $5 investment, right? You're going to stick it in a door. And what we're going to hope is that this doesn't like snap back and hit me in the face, but you want to lock the door on the other side, right? So we're going to put it in the door. Any door will work. Close it tight. You see our daughter over there, hi baby, I love you. Okay. And what you're going to do is you're just going to push out. Right? So we're just going to do a push up. Just like we're standing up, you're going to split your legs and push straight out just like that, like you're punching at a target. One. Two. Three. So if we are really so deconditioned, right? And I kind of want you to get out of the term of using like out of shape or fat or something with kind of a negative connotation. Hang on. Hi, baby. So that we can do push-ups with the resistance band, right? So now you've got a few different ways that we can do the push-up. There's the baseline. There's the girl, aka modified push-ups. There's elevated push-ups right or we can use the resistance bands okay so that's our push next we want to do our squat okay so one of the things we want to do too is we want to do a squat right now look i always like to start with legs it's really some people like to start upper some people start like to start lower i hate doing legs so i just like to get it out of the way right so what we're going to do is a really really basic squatting movement right what we want to do Feet, shoulder width apart. Right, I'm gonna let you look at me from the side because it's gonna make a little bit more sense. Right hand, you can see my sexy abs. They're not that sexy, they're not that fat, but up. So chest out, butt out, right? Shoulder width apart, okay? Then we're gonna squat down. When we squat, we wanna make sure we drive down on our heels, not on the balls of our feet. So what I don't wanna see is I'm not looking for this, right? That's not what I want. What I want is I want our heels down, coming down nice and slow to where we feel comfortable, and then back up for one. Two, you're gonna see some upper body coming forward, that's okay. Three, real basic squats where you feel comfortable. If you need to make your legs a little bit wider, right, that's okay too. If you wanna make sure your knees track over your feet, right, that's okay. One. Two, okay, now, if that's too much, okay, you can also elevate your heels a little bit on something that's maybe a half inch to an inch off the ground, like this convenient rubber padding you can get at like Home Depot for a few bucks, 
and this will help you get into a better squatting position, right? So this will help as well. We also only want to squat to about chair length. So we're not going all the way butt to floor. Really, it's right about there. Back up, one, two. Now, let's say that, again, squatting is too much. If we're 300 pounds, yeah, squatting is probably too much, right? So we're gonna get our fancy piece of gym equipment, the chair, and now we're gonna do something that we do 100 times a day that if we made a little bit better would really make a difference in our life. We're gonna sit down and then we're gonna stand up, right? i.e. a squat. So I love it when people tell me they can't squat, like I can't squat. Really? Can you sit down in a chair? Well, yeah. Okay, cool, then we can squat, right? So we're gonna stand here, right? Same thing, except we're gonna have a convenient chair. Mm -hmm. Fancy, right? Gyms will use boxes, right? Everybody's got a box in their house, it's a chair. So we're gonna sit down. One, two, it's amazing how this just gets you in like almost perfect squatting form, right? Three, and I'm not saying like come down here, have a cigarette, take a nap, right? We're just touching it and back up just like this. Okay, if that is even too much, the other thing you can do is you can always use the chair to hold on to something, right? To offload some of our body weight. So we're gonna hold on to it here, Right, and look, in a gym environment, we would use some sort of TRX strap, right? But if we don't have fancy TRX straps, because they're really expensive, then we're gonna hold on to the chair. We're gonna let our arms do some of the work. Right, until we can get to where we're sitting down in a chair and then ultimately where we're doing some squats. Now, let's say our legs are good, right? We need to make it a little bit harder. This is where we're gonna use those fancy dumbbells that we spent $20 on. We're gonna hold a goblet style, right? And now we're gonna do a squat. Oh my God, I just made it harder. Okay, and here you can obviously add weight. If we need to add one more modification, let's say we got real exotic and okay, cool. We spent, we spent the money on, you know, the resistance bands, right? Take our door jam thingy off, you go there. We're gonna step on the band. And now I'm gonna do some squats, right? Oopsie. <laughs> ah, there we go. Just like that. And now we're making the squats a little bit harder. <laughs> Way saying, harder. <laughs> that's the downside of using the bands for squats, right? But now we can do a squat. So we've got two things. We've got a push and we've got a squat. Okay, so the other thing that we need to do is a pull exercise. And the reason we want to do a pull, really simply, we want to work on our back, right? So we want to have strong legs. We want to have strong chest, strong shoulders, nice triceps, right? But we also want to be able to work on our back and our biceps, right? So everything we're doing today is what we would call a compound movement, and that basically involves more than one joint, more than one major muscle group, right? So here, we just wanna do a row, and there's a lot of really easy ways to do rows. This is where the dumbbells kinda of come in the most handy, right? So what we're gonna do is just a bent over dumbbell row. Just simply this, we're gonna put the dumbbells, real exotic, in our hands, we're gonna start, we're gonna bend our legs a little bit because what we don't want to do is I don't want to see our, our rows looking like this with our back all bent, right? That, that's an easy way to end up at the doctor's office. So start straight, bend your knees a little bit, hinge over, you see how my spine is kind of neutral? The dumbbells are just hanging naturally. And now I'm just pulling them right to my chest. One, two, three. Four. Simply like that. So that's a bent over dumbbell row. Okay. Now, if that's a lot on your back and you're really worried about your back, we're gonna get our fancy piece of gym equipment, the chair. All right. We're gonna put everything on the ground. We're gonna use the chair to brace ourselves. Oh, she's mad. Okay. So 
We're gonna grab this, we're gonna lean over, we're gonna put one hand here, and now we're just gonna start the lawnmower. Right? So, one, two, three, just like that, okay? We can repeat on the other side. I know, really hard. Again, this will protect your back. Wing over, one, two, three. Okay, so now we have a one-arm dumbbell row. Again, now let's say we got the, we got the uh, resistance bands, right? Not the dumbbells. So what we're gonna do, simply put, we can do a couple different things with the resistance bands. And that's where these things kind of come really, really handy, especially when you start using the door attachment, right? And that's why I'm such a big fan of resistance bands. One, you get pretty good, you know, a pretty good workout with them. You can do a lot of different things. The other thing that makes them really, really good is they're incredibly inexpensive and they can pack almost anywhere. I mean, look, you could take this, let's say you're an executive, you could pack this in your briefcase or in your backpack and you can get a workout in your office. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna do a row, right? So we're gonna put the door jam attachment into any door. Please make sure the door is locked properly so it doesn't snap back and hit you in the face, All right? We're gonna stand back. And now we're just gonna row. Super difficult, right? But we're pulling. Get a little bit more tension by standing a little farther back, okay? If you wanna get more of a pull down, right? You see in the gym, we do the pull downs or the chin ups all the time. Most of us can't chin our own body weight. One day, you know, hashtag goals, right? You can put it a little bit higher, get a little bit different angle on it. Kind of sit down. There's my daughter, said, hi, Alex. We're gonna sit back. Right, get on one knee, and we're gonna simply pull down just like we're doing the pull up, right? So, that, how does, how does a puppy go? Okay, so that's how we get a pull. So now we have a squat, we have a push, and we have a pull. The only thing we have left is our core. All right, so everybody wants to have a strong core. Now, you need to understand something about your core. So we're not gonna strengthen our core, we're not gonna get six pack abs by doing a bunch of leg raises and by doing a bunch of sit-ups, right? That's probably worse for our back than anything else. Your, your core are really full of muscles that, that just wanna stabilize things, right? They're stabilizing muscles. They're not really movement muscles. They have some movement function, but that's not really what they do every day. And you'll notice that everything we've done today kind of engages your core a little bit, whether it's the squats, right, any modification of them, the pull, right, any modification, and the push, any modification, dumbbells, resistance bands, full, modified, whatever, is gonna engage your core a little bit. The other thing that we're gonna do, and the, the easiest core exercise to start with, is just to start with planks, right? Because planks can be modified in a lot of different ways. So. There's the standard plank that you would see from your hands, right, which just looks like a push-up position, just like this, right? We can also go down to our elbows. And again, if you're seeing a collapse here, or we're having to hold it too far up here, guys, that's not a plank. We really need to modify, right? And look, it's okay to modify. The goal is to get a progression. Right, that's why we're starting simple. And by doing something, yeah, of course, eventually you're gonna be able to do the bigger things, right? But you gotta start small to get somewhere big later on. And that's like a really important thing to just kind of remember. This is a process. We didn't get overweight over the course of a matter of months, for most of it's our whole lives or, our, or our years, right? We're not gonna lose it in a matter of weeks. I don't care what any infomercial says, right? But we have to start someplace. So. If we need to modify, look, we can modify from our knees, right? So we can modify like this. We can modify like this. One of my favorite ways is to use our fancy piece of gym equipment called the chair and modify that way. So we're gonna put it down. Please, of course, put it someplace where it's not gonna slide away because that would be embarrassing, not only for you, but for your loved ones who could watch like the dog or the baby. And again, you're just going to hold it. You don't want to do this number. You want to do this number. What we can, would really like to see you do initially when we're doing planks is this. 
I really want to see you trying to hold planks for some length of time while you're controlling your breathing, right? So if you can do it for 15 or 20 seconds, that would be great. Taking deep breaths in, deep breaths out, okay? If we can work to 15, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, that would be fantastic. If we can play for a minute, that would be great. Anything longer than a minute, it's really, really boring, really, really fast. And at that point, we just need to come up with something harder, right? Now, for most of us who are starting from a place where we're very deconditioned, it's going to take some time, right? All of these exercises that we're doing, we're going to make this workout deadly simple. You're going to do squat, push, pull, core, right? Two sets, 10 to 15 repetitions. Right, except for the plank, we're going to start with whatever length of time we can do, trying to work up to 30 seconds to a minute. Okay, so the workout is just four moves, right? It's a squat, it's a push, it's a pull, it's core exercise. We want to make this really, really simple. So we're just going to do two sets at a time, and then we're going to move on to the next exercise. And what that basically means is this we're going to do 10 to 15 repetitions of squats, right? We're gonna do two sets, we're gonna rest like 30 seconds to a minute, whatever we feel like we need to. And what you wanna do is you wanna think like, okay, if I feel like I'm really out of breath, we take a little break, right? Let, let our heart rate come down a little bit till we start feeling good again. Try to, try, try to not let that last for more than like, you know, 60 seconds or so. And then you're gonna do the next set. And then we're gonna move on to the next thing, right? That, that's how we're gonna do it. And if, so if we do that with our squats and then our push-ups and then our pulls and then our little bit of a core workout that we're gonna do, in a perfect world, this workout shouldn't take more than 20 or 30 minutes, right? That, that's all the time we need right now. So for working out, like if we're going to walk for 20 or 30 minutes, right? Okay, a little walk. We're going to do this a couple times a week, 20 or 30 minutes. We can eat slightly better, okay? And by slightly better, I mean just less junk, right? And guess what's going to happen? If you do this for 30 to 60 days, and you don't start losing weight, I, I promise you won't be shy. Most of you will lose weight faster than you probably realize, right? With some small changes. And that's how we're gonna get the ball rolling. I want you to think, fitness, really emotional little snowball, right? It's really easy for that snowball to go negative, right? And build up to like a really big thing. And that's kind of how we got where we are. It's really, it's really easy too. We start with some consistency, easy workouts, let them build, let them build, let them build, and before you know it, we're doing more. The feeling I want you to have at the end of this, I want you to feel like you could do a little bit more. All right, so this is the only time you're going to hear somebody who's a certified personal trainer tell you, I want you to feel like you got something left in the tank. Most coaches are like, I want you to leave it all out on the field and do this and go crazy and sweat like a pig. No, we're not, we're not doing that right now, right? Right now, what we're trying to do is we're trying to feel reasonably good at the end of the workout, like we did some work but we're not dying, so we want to work out again the next day, right? That's how we start getting consistency over time, which equals results. Listen, if you, if you like what we're doing here, please hit subscribe. We do a new video every week. Definitely click the bell, get the notifications every time we do something else. And if you continue to follow us, you'll continue to get these kind of tips for how you transform yourself from someone that was 350 pounds to somebody that, yeah, okay, maybe I look a little bit better today, right? And that's what we want. Ultimately, look, it's just I feel much better than I did seven years ago. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll talk to you next week.